Liberdaji, a unique Japanese influenced neighborhood in the city of Sao Paulo. Last video, I explored the area and gave my honest opinions and reactions about the place as a Chinese Canadian visiting for the first time. This time around, I will take a look at another very, very important question How is the food? I visited a few random places around Liberdaji and will share my honest opinions about my food adventures. What's good everybody, this is CP and I'll be your crappy tour guide for today. So let's not waste any more time and... Zouchiba! Personally, I'm not a huge foodie. But in my opinion, the food in Liberdaji has to be one of the biggest attractions. If you are looking for Asian food, this is probably the place to hit up in Sao Paulo. There are plenty of options including different types of Asian and Asian fusion food. And to be honest, I don't think having one meal there is enough. During my one week stay in the city, I went back several times to try out different restaurants. To start things off, the Sunday market might be a good place to start. It happens every Sunday and they have plenty of vendors serving a variety of Asian and Asian fusion food. Overall, it is a unique experience to have a meal in an outdoor environment, with many different choices within reach. It's not the biggest and can't be compared to something like the Richmond Night Market in Vancouver. Make sure you watch that video too. But they still have a good variety of vendors serving food that is hard to find elsewhere in Brazil. Moving on, one of the more memorable places I ate at in Liberdaji was at Tonka. Tonka is an all-you-can-eat buffet with a mix of food from different Asian cuisines. Needless to say, there were plenty of choices. Some very good dishes and some very average ones. But overall, it is a good place to check out for lunch or dinner, especially if you're hungry and not sure what you want to eat. You can't go wrong here because you can try a little bit of everything, and there's a good chance you'll find something you like. I'm gonna make my own udon. Yeah, I have two of these. Tikal. And obligado. Fish, huh? Fish? Fish. So here's a look at my second dish. I got a good mix of uh, Thai, Korean, and Chinese food. So we'll see how it goes. Now this is my third plate, and I'm getting a little full, but it's all you can eat. So I have to eat my work. I paid 90 rios or 95 rios, so I have to pay uh, eat my work. One of my favorite things there was probably the frozen yogurt machine. I loved it so much I ate three that night. A lot of buffets I go to usually only serve ice cream, so I thought it was kind of cool to be able to build and create my own frozen yogurt. Dessert time. This is actually a lot better than ice cream because it's uh, less filling. It's like a fruity flavor. This is uh, frozen yogurt number two. Uh, maybe I could go for a third one, I don't know, we'll see. And this is yogurt number three. I think I might be done after this, but we'll see. I'm gonna be so fat tomorrow, but I have to, but I'm cheap, so I have to eat as much as I can, so we'll see. Overall, Tonka is a fantastic all-you-can-eat buffet, especially if you appreciate Asian food and want a variety of options. Price-wise, it is a bit on the expensive side, but definitely worth trying if you're really hungry and want to try many different things. Quality-wise, you obviously can't compare it to something like the all-you-can-eat buffets in Macau or Las Vegas. 
but overall I say this place was a nice pleasant surprise as there aren't many similar restaurants like this one in Liver Dodge. For 15 years of good luck, hit that like button now and activate your good fortunes. Do it now. Besides Tanka, I decided to go for some ramen at the restaurant Momo Hamin. According to the reviews, this place had pretty decent ratings, so I decided to give it a shot. Overall, it is a pretty big and lively restaurant with several floors. It somewhat resembles places you see in Japan and Asia, where many places are built upwards. This place offers a good variety of options. The price might be considered a bit expensive in Brazil, but at the same time, the place was clean and the atmosphere was great. So I think I'm gonna try the four, the four uh, different, I think it's like four different types of uh, ingredients in the ramen for 34 reels. They charge five reels for water and it's uh, 550 for for a soft drink, so why not pay 50 cents more for a soft drink? The ramen quality was pretty authentic, with a good amount of chew and bounce to the noodles, and the taste of the broth was pretty decent and wasn't too salty. I actually visited Momo twice because there were a few different options I wanted to try out. Overall, I don't really have anything bad to say about this place. So if you are in the area and want to have a nice bowl of ramen, the restaurant Momo Hamen is probably a safe place to check out. For a quick lunch, I went with a random place in the heart of Liberdaji called Eat Asia. It is a Japanese style fast food restaurant that offers a good variety of snacks and street food. Overall, it is a very convenient and affordable place to grab a quick meal. The interior was very casual and relaxed with plenty of tables, and the place was surprisingly clean. The decorations and designs made me feel like I was in a random restaurant somewhere in Japan. Any drinks? Uh, no drink. Just that? Uh, uh, two more. So, uh, so uh, which burger is the most popular one? Uh, Shibuya because it's the most basic. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so I'll get one. Yeah. As you can see, I had no clue what I wanted to order. So I went with the most popular burger, the Shibuya. And also went with the Tokyo Japa Dog and the Yakisoba with Gyoza. I usually don't eat this much but for the purpose of this video, I decided to take one for the team. The burger and the yakisoba bowl was just okay for me. And for some reason, the hot dog was my favorite out of the three. Something about the sweet mustard sauce they used just made the entire hot dog really amazing. Mm -mm. Another cool thing about this place is that you don't pay at the counter like you do in most American fast food restaurants. They give you an electronic chip to place your order and after you eat, you pay at the door. If you want to stay up to date with all my videos and watch me make a fool of myself in random destinations, make sure you subscribe. subscribe. Subscribe, 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 subscribe right now and I'll love you forever, I promise. <laughs> Moving on, aside from the food, there are snack bars and small shops for desserts, coffees, and bubble tea scattered around the district. So it might be a good idea to save some stomach space to wash down your meals with something sweet after. The 89 degrees Celsius coffee station was one of the more memorable places I visited. It is located in the heart of Liridaji, right by the square and is very hard to miss. It seems like every time I walked by the place it was super busy and was a very popular place to grab a coffee, tea or dessert. The vibe was very relaxed inside and reminded me of a very busy Starbucks in a big city. Aside from coffee, you can try other things like cakes, desserts, and other random drinks as well. It seems like one of the more popular places for locals to hit up to spend an afternoon. But do remember that the seating can be very limited, so it might be a good idea to go before the rush. 
Overall, I think this coffee shop is probably a worthwhile place to check out at least once to either have a drink or soak in the atmosphere to have a relaxing afternoon. Bubble Kill was another place I stopped by to grab a bubble tea. According to reviews, it is a very popular bubble tea shop in the district with many options. The place is trendy and is a nice convenient place to stop by for a quick drink. I went on a quiet weekday so there weren't too many people there. I went with the strawberry flavor under their most popular section. I might be wrong but based on the description it seems like this is their version of the strawberry milk tea. Or in Mandarin is the chow mei nai cha. Personally I'm used to having bubble tea from places like Hong Kong, Taiwan and Canada. So this one tasted a bit different to me. It was a little thicker and less watery. And taste wise it reminded me of the famous yogurt drink Yop. Overall it's not bad but different than the strawberry milk teas I'm used to drinking. However I must say that the portions were pretty big and it's more than enough for one person. They also have a pretty decent sitting area upstairs to hang out. So it might be a place for good friends to spend a few hours to catch up. If you explore a block or two away from Liberdaji Square, you can also find other similar shops that offer bubble teas, desserts, and other treats. Which I think could take you 5 to 6 visits to try some of the things you really want to try. If you want me to be your crappy tour guide for other places and random food offenders, make sure you subscribe and check out my playlist for my other crappy videos. Go watch them now before I delete them all tomorrow. Ciao,